Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Okay, from Leviticus 26 that we done last night, the previous recording that we have, we're going to jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And what, and what we're going to see is we're going to pick up where we were at Leviticus. Now, Leviticus is written to the Israelites that are in the wilderness. And 40 years, they failed God. God says they'll die their children will be the ones that go into the promised land. So those that are written in Leviticus, they're going to die off except for their children. Now when we pick up Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, these are those children, these are the Israelites that are going to go into the promised land. You say, what's the difference between Leviticus and Deuteronomy? Those that did not get to go in the land and those that will go into the land. And Deuteronomy is called the second giving of the law. Now let's look at what we have here of Leviticus 26, which we already studied. And watch where it parallels. And watch how severe it gets. Because these children have already seen the failures of their fathers and their grandparents. They know what the wrath of God is upon sin. And when we see what we read now, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Absolutely not. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, do, remember the do, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. That's what God's purpose was for the Jew. When Jesus said, you are the lighthouse on a hill, he wasn't talking to the church. It's coming out of De uh, Deuteronomy 28. You're to be that nation. You're to guide the entire world that this is Jehovah, the great I am. And as that man of Ethiopia will come to Jerusalem to worship the holy God. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Imagine a blessing overtaking you. A blessing of God overpowering you. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. And blessed shalt thou be in the field. City and the fields. The city and suburbs. Blessed, happy. According to Leah naming her son, blessed. And they shall, I shall be blessed, I shall be happy. Blessed shall be the, the fruit of thy body, children, and the fruit of thy ground, literal fruit, vegetation, and the fruit of thy cattle, livestock, and the increase of thy kind, it's cattle, cows, multiple, uh, more than one, and the flocks of thy sheep. Great blessings, great pregnancy, and crops. Don't worry about the seventh year. I'm going to give you three years of, of fruit in the sixth year. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Ever wonder why a store has a basket or a shopping carriage? Deuteronomy 28, verse 5. There it is. Did you know that was in the, in the Bible? You know, you walk in the store. Honey, you give me, a, give me one of the baskets. It's in the Bible. God said, I'll bless that basket. I will fill that basket and it won't cost much. It's not America. Blessed thou shalt be when thou comest in. You enter. Blessed shall be when thou goest out. Come in or out. 
It's going to be a blessing. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. You're going to kick butt. If they're your enemy, you're going to win. They shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways. Here they come. Boom. They're scattered. Again, we, we see that in Leviticus 26. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy store houses. Your barns, wherever they keep the crops, the warehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. God's going to bless their hand, their hand, their handiness, their, their handmade. That's where we get it from. Uh, unto, and he shall bless thee in the land, there's the Jewish heaven, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That land belongs to the Jew, and God says, if you do right, I will bless you, and, and you're going to just be glorified in that land. And when Jesus came, they were sickly. And the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. That's the only people I ever call holy. Don't you dare call that man holy. I'm not even going to say the classification of a dad. That's blasphemy. That's taken out of the Gospel of John. I forget which chapter. The only people that call themselves by God is the Jews. And if you call yourself holy, you are stealing from the Jews. And God says, I'll curse them that curse you. You're cursing. Unto himself. God says, those Israelites, they're mine. God says, I take possession of them. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. See, see the... See the works? Are you glad you're not saved by those works? I'm saved by the righteousness of Jesus Christ that fulfilled the law. This sounds great. You say, well, Leviticus 26, you wait. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. That's not today. And they shall be afraid of thee. That's not today. They're in their sin. They're in unrighteousness. The Lord shall make thee plentiness in goods. Home goods, house goods. This land is going to be overpowering of children, of cattle, of fruits, of everything that land is going to produce. In the fruit of thy body, children. And in the fruit of thy cattle, baby cows, milk, beef. And in the field of thy ground, vegetation. In the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. It's almost like Eden. Just pure great blessing. But as Adam and Eve did not disregard, did disregard the word of God, so will Israel disregard the word of God. When you go against what God says, then you're in trouble. That's sin. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Forget treasures. Get God's treasure. Jesus said, set your treasures things on in heaven, not on earth. The heaven to give the rain unto the land to his season. The proper rain, the proper time, God gives the rain, not the weathermen. Not Mother Nature. Or whoever you want to play in the rain game. Not do your rain dance. It's all wrong. God gives the weather. We read that in, in Leviticus. And to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Bankers. Interests. That's what that's what one of the problems it, uh, G Germany had with the Jews. They were too great of bankers. And they were going to blame the economy on them. Thou shalt not borrow. So they're going to be the banking nation. They're going to be the ones with money. And the Lord shall make thee the head. The great part, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. You're going to be the top of the top. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to serve and to do them. And Daniel 3, 32 and 38, that image to head is Babylon. And they go into Babylon in captivity. So you see, they've already, by their sins, which Jeremiah proclaims to them, you've lost your blessings. 
And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee. In the day to the right hand to the left, go after other gods to serve them. Now in Leviticus 26, we saw 13 blessings of great things. Deuteronomy 28, we get one more verse 14. But then we're going to get hammered. Okay. Now comes the negative. And I guess this is going to match Leviticus 26. But, that's a big but. It shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and they don't, to observe to do all his commandments and his judgments, which I commanded, Moses commanded thee this day, talking to the Jews that are going in the land, and they're going to sin. They're sinning by the end of Joshua. Put away your gods. Oh, we'll put away our gods, and it's not recorded. That all these curses, okay, here comes the curses, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. That's reverse of what we already read in the beginning of the chapter. Curse shall be that basket in thy store. America's cursed in her basket, and America's cursed by the shopping carriage. What you put in a shopping carriage did not cost 10, 5 years ago. Prices are going to go up. You're going to get little for your money. We are in a day of age right now that my wife has seen that when we buy the same product, we bring it home, we open up a little tiny thing now. I've seen that with a jar of mushrooms. We've seen it with a box of crackers and cereal. You're not getting what you paid for. The price goes up, the thing goes down. That is the mark of not of a poor economy. That's the mark of the wrath of God that you're not right with God. As to the Jew, and so to the Gentile. Because if God don't do it to the Gentile, he's got he's to take those Jews, he's got to pull them out of hell and say, I'm very sorry that I did that to you. And he's not. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, your children. The fruit of thy land, the fruits. All Leviticus 26. An increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed. Curse is opposite of happy. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing. Curse, curse, and then cursing. And that's not four-letter words. Wickedness, evilness, judgment. Don't bless them. Give them the rottenness. You don't want God to say that. Vexation. Ooh, troubles, troubles, troubles. And rebuke. <laughs> He's going to challenge them to their face. Rebuke means you go to that person's face and you tell them what he's wrong. In all that thou settest thy hand, there's the hand, we already read about that, unto for to do unto thou be destroyed. Unto you thou perish quickly, perish death. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish. And John the Baptist says in the very very same chapter, verse 36, he says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Quickly. God's not going to put it off. Quickly. Because of thy wickedness, of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. See? This nation is forsaken God, giving up God. It's only going to get worse. You've been teaching the God of evolution. So you're getting the evolution of God. Dog eat dog. The Lord shall make the pestilence. That's not good. Cleave unto thee. Pestilence was one of, the, one of the diseases God sent unto the Egyptians. For not doing what God told them to do by letting the people go. Now they're not doing what God's told them to do. Pestilence. When you're there, as a nation, you're not going to do what God tells you to do. Look for what we're reading now. Look for what we read in Leviticus 26. And there's only one remedy to get out of that. Get back to God. Repent of God. Get back in the Bible. This nation ain't going to do that. Cleave unto thee. It's going to stick to you. Like Velcro. Until he has consumed thee from off the land. You're getting out. Babylon. They're not in the land today. The Antichrist is going to drive them out. Whither thou goest to possess it. 
the Lord shall smite thee with consumption. That is waste, destruction, consuming. It's like eating something. You know, you got something, you're eating it. You eventually, you, every bite you take, it's disappearing. And you got a car, rust gets in that car. Eventually, that rust is going to keep eating, eating, eating away. It's also a disease that eats you away. Yes, yeah, a disease that it, it just gets rid of you, gets rid of your body. And with fever, remember that in Leviticus 26, ag, that was the uh, ag. What's the name of that? that we're going to come up with that too. A bit, a dag, what it was, was, was you get chills and then it turns to a fever. And with inflammation, that's a medical term, and with extreme burning. We saw that with uh, leprosy, burning. That's a hot rash. It's painful. I've had one one time. And with sword, war, with blasting. And with mildew, what's the problem today? Mold and mildew. People have died from mold. Houses have been left because of mold. Today, there are places, I am told, in Louisiana, uh, uh, when that hurricane came through, there are places you cannot inhabit no more because of mold and mildew. That's a big concern today. Look on the shelf, your cleaner. Mold and mildew resistant comes in the Bible, comes rejecting what God has said. And they shall pursue thee unto thou perish. Who? Your enemies. And these diseases and these uh, tribulations, they're going to come after you. And thy, he, thy heaven that's over thy head shall be brass. This is Leviticus 26, 19. And the earth that's under thee shall be iron. No rain and your ground is going to be chapped. That burning, that what we just read in 22, is found in Leviticus 26, 16. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. That does you no good. From heaven shall it come down upon thee, and thou be destroyed. Dust storms. That's what that is, dust storms. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. We just read that. That was supposed to be their enemies doing that. Now they're doing it. And shall be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. They're all over the world now. They were all in the world, the known world in, in Acts chapter 2. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air. Type of uh, Armageddon. And unto the beasts of the earth, no man shall frail thee away. Fray thee away. The Lord will smite thee with the blotch of Egypt. That's the disease. And with the emeralds. Emeralds. That is hemorrhoids. And I guess when God's going to send you hemorrhoids with a blotch of Egypt, I guarantee it's going to be very uncomfortable. And I don't think there will be any cream or, or anything that will be able to help you. Not when God's angry with you. And with the scab. And with the itch. Ooh, that's a bad one. You ever get your body just itching there's no relief? Maybe on the back where you can't get no relief. Wherefore thou canst not be healed. Hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids? The scabs? The itch? Nothing's going to relieve it. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, anxiety, going crazy, with blindness. This is the condition when Jesus came. They were in their sins when Jesus came. In all an astonishment of heart. Thou shalt grope at morning. As a blind gropeth in the darkness, looking around, trying to find that, so you don't hit nothing. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Huh? Thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind man gropeth in dark. Even when you got light, you're going to be blind. That's what Israel was. 
Jesus said, You had eyes to see, but you see not. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. There's no light. There's no guidance. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled. And that doesn't mean give them everything they want. That means they're going to take from you. When Levi and Simeon took Shechem's family and murdered them, they went and took all their stuff. That's spoiling. Even more, evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and no man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Now we were already read in the law. Verse 30 is a man to be exempt from military service. If he just got married a wife for one year, he's not entitled to business. So the Bible says so he can share his wife. If you have a house, you're not going to battle. Go live in that house. Go enjoy that house. Again, with the vineyard. This is military deferment of a young man. Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes. And thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. And shall not and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thee, thine enemies. Thou shalt have none to restore them. It looks like Job chapter one. Now we're getting to Job. Job is a picture of the, of the tribulation period. Now Job will get them back. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel 1. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. World War II. And there shall be no might in thy hand. You can't do nothing. For rejecting the word of God. The fruit of thy land, all thy labors, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight. And of thy eyes which thou shalt see. You're just going prone crazy. And there will be no medication. I guarantee during World War II those Jews were just driven crazy. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. Not to be able to walk, won't be able to pray in the legs with a botch, and that's an ulcer, sore box, an ulcer that cannot be healed. How many times have we seen that already? You're not going to get no really. You put medication on it, you're going to get pills, it ain't going to help. It pictures a man in hell. Hey, Job's coming up in a minute, too, again. It says here, from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. And there's Job right there. Job chapter 2 is when he. So Job is a type of tribulation. And God, if that Jew does receive that mark. Oh, here we go. But if that Jew does not receive that mark, he's not going to be able to buy, sell, or do anything. He's going to have to suffer. And Jesus said, Woe unto them that have children. Woe unto them that give suck. Very serious business when you don't listen to God. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, Babylon. And there shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone, Bow down at the music and the sat bug and the other thing. All the sheriffs, all the people, bow down. Shadrach, Meshach, you won't do it. You're going to go in the furnace. There it is. There it is. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, jokes, Jewish jokes, and a byword among all the nations, whether the Lord has lead. Go look online for Jewish jokes, Jewish jokes in, in books. 
And what's some of the Jewish jokes? Are there? They find out, you know, how do you make a copper wire? Throw a penny down between two Jews. That involves money, which you ever had. The great financial Jews restored down to nothing. Thou shalt carry much seed out of the field, and shalt gather but a little in, for the locust shall consume it. Exodus. The locusts came and ate all the fruit. You go out in the garden, you throw that seed out there. Oh, we're going to get grown. What's that sound I hear? Gone. Destroyed. You remember the beasts in Revelation coming up and going to start eating? Hurt not the trees, but what about the seed? And thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes. For the worm shall eat them. And I think it's Joel that mentions those worms. The palmer worm. The worm. So it's a complete crop loss by God. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout. Plenty. All thy coals. But thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil. For thy olive shall cast his fruit. Now look at 3940. That's the wine and that's the anointing oil that would be used in the tabernacle or the temple. God's got rid of it. God says, hey, I don't want it no more. You're not doing right. I'll destroy it. And look here. We learned that the olive oil is used for the anointing, the Holy Spirit. And they would put it on their face. It's like a, a sun remedy for you know burns and sunburns and tanning. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. But thou shalt not enjoy them, Job. For they shall go into captivity. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Again. All the trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Book of Exodus. The stranger, that's the that's Gentile, that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. He's the one going to be uplifted. That's the church age today. Gentiles are receiving the Jewish Messiah sent for his people, the Jews, and God is lifting them up to be the children, the sons of God. And if a Jew don't receive Christ as his Savior, he's going to die and go to hell, lower parts of the earth. When I die, I am absent from the body, and I am seated in, high, in highly places, high, in the throne of God. And thou shalt come down very low into hell where hell is and then the prosperity the, the situation you are you're going to be dirt and scum and the Jews are going to reign over you the life of Jesus Christ when he comes to Israel Rome is leading them and they're put down they need Rome to, to crucify Jesus Christ they had to get permission of the government we have no, we, uh, I forget what it is. We have no, I forget. He shall let, he shall, the, the Gentiles shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. We already read that. That's reverse. Reverse of not listening to God. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. Man, we've been doing more than 14 verses. This picture is a man that's rejected Christ today. He's in hell. He gets no relief. He is not going to be ever be pardoned. Jew or Greek. These curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You know why we're in the condition we are with hospitals and police and people and death? The wages of sin is death. Adam and Eve did not obey the voice of God. One lesson you get from Genesis or Revelation. If God says it, obey it. The church is not obeying the word of God and God says, you make me sick. Well, how great they are. The people put out the, oh, we got the world's greatest pre preacher. We got the world's greatest pastor. Really? 
I thought we were supposed to praise God, not the pastor. I thought we were supposed to worship Jesus Christ. That's the lie to see in church age. To keep the commandments and the statutes which, is, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Jews require a sign. For a wonder, Egypt. And upon thy seed forever, your children. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. You gotta go to church. I gotta do this because they want me to. God says that's a sin. Serve the Lord with joy. Thanksgiving. And with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. You're supposed to be thankful. Not just one time a year. All the time. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Babylon. In hunger. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. That's the life of Paul. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Jeremiah 28, 14. Remember it was a wooden yoke. And that idiot broke it. I forget his name. And, he, and God says, go make an iron. And all the nations. Jeremiah 28, 14. Until he has destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee far from far. From the end of the earth. As swift as an eagle fly it. That eagle was a symbol of Germany. The eagle is a symbol of America. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. It's a language you don't understand. A nation of fierce countenance. They're, they're just wicked. Mean and cruel. Which shall not regard the person of the old. Nor show favor to the young. You're going to come up to a young man. They're going, to, they're going to abuse him. As much as they would do for an old man. He shall eat the fruit of the cattle. And the fruit of thy land. Until thou be destroyed. Which also shall not leave thee. Either corn, wine, or oil. Or the increase of thy kind. Or flocks of thy sheep. Until he has destroyed thee. He's going to take all the food. Almost like a one world government. You can't buy or sell without that mark. And there's only one grocery store chain that you've got to go to. Beat your forehead or beat your right arm. He shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Unto thy high and fence walls come down. That's exactly what happened with Babylon. Babylon took those walls down. Lamentations. Where thou trustest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Again, that's Babylon coming in. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. Lamentations. The flesh of thy sons and thy daughters. We read that in Leviticus 26. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Oh see God gives children. You want to eat? I'll give you something to eat. It's a boy. Put it in water and boil it. God's serious about sin. Which the Lord thy God has given thee. In the siege. Babylon. In the straightness where thy enemy shall distress thee. Babylon. So that the man that is tender among you. He's very, he's very rich. He's very intelligent. He's very prosperous. He's, he's just a well-defined man. And very delicate. Does things proper. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. And toward the wife of his youth. Oh, bosom. I had to turn the page there. I thought it was going to be you. So, here's a complication in the family. Because of the sieges. Because of the wickedness that these people are doing against God. And the family today is broken. Because the church is broken. The church is broken because the family is broken. And toward the remnant of his children. That's an interesting word. Remnant. 
which he shall lead. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he shall eat. He's not going to share his child for dinner with anybody, including his wife. Where's Junior? I ain't telling you. Because he has nothing left him in the siege. Everything's gone. And in the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. This has happened. This is prophecy. The tender and delicate woman among you. She's proper. She's well. She's nice. Which would not adventure to sit the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicacy. She walks right. And tenderness. Her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her own young one that cometh out between her feet, pregnancy, birth, toward her child which she had which she shall bear, it's yet to be, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the seeds and straighten it. She's about to give birth. She runs and hides. And as soon as that child comes forth, she eats that child and won't share it with her husband, as the husband won't share it with, with his wife. This is how serious sin is. There are women today who just throw their babies in garbage cans, leave them in bathroom stalls. And straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in thy gates Babylon bother when the Antichrist comes because you are not gonna the Bible says unless you receive that mark you will not buy or sell there's only one other thing you can do you want food woe unto them that are get suck woe unto them that are with child why if you read Deuteronomy 28 is you're gonna eat that child now that's got to be a sin. Sad what sin can do. If thou will not deserve to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, Deuteronomy, that thou may fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. And that doesn't mean great and happy. Oh, they're going to cause wonder. They're going to make people go, whoa. What was that? God's anger against sin and the people that sin. And the plagues of thy seed. Your children are going to be born with plagues. It doesn't say diseases. It says plagues. There's going to be something to happen to their children because of sin. Even great plagues, not just plagues, great plagues, and of long continuance. It's going to be nonstop. Sore sicknesses and of long continuance. No relief. Hell. Moreover, he will. More of he, God, will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Go back and read Exodus. Leprosy comes out of Africa. That big chapter 13 and 14 of Leviticus. God got so mad at Miriam, he plagued her with leprosy. God got so mad at Asa for being in the holy place, he plagued him with leprosy. Which thou was afraid of. That would just run you right back to, to, to Exodus. They were afraid of those plagues. Oh, I hope it don't happen to me. And they shall cleave unto thee. The diseases. are going to jump on you. And every sickness and every plague. Which is not written in the book of this law. Then will the Lord bring upon thee. Unto thou be destroyed unknown diseases that are not even mentioned in the Bible. Ye shall be left few in number, the remnant, 
at the end of the tribulation. Whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for a multitude, well many, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good. Oh, I just love blessing them people. And to multiply you. I'm going to bless them with children. They are happy. Look at the mothers holding their children. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. Does that sound like God hates the sin and loves the sinner? And to bring you to naught, absolutely nothing. And ye shall be plucked from off the land which thou goest to possess it. That's, that's like telling a Christian you're not going to New Jerusalem. To the Jew. You're out of here. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Over the world. From one end of the earth. Even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Happening today. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Even wood and stone. Every country they go. They got, they got gods. But when the when the Christian gets right in Corinthians, his, his main control, control that he writes to Paul, what do we do with these idols? The Christian's getting right. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, anxiety, and failing of eyes, blindness, and sorrow of the mind. Something wrong with your mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Oh. And thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. You don't know if you're going to live. It's anxiety from sin. Stop popping them with pills and find out what their sin condition is. In the morning thou shalt say, Would it God it be evening? And at even thou shalt say, Would it God be were morning? For the fear of thy heart within, thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Jeremiah's time they go back to Egypt with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, the land. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and for bondwomen. Okay? You're going to slavery. And no man shall buy you. That's exactly what happens after Titus takes over and destroys Jerusalem in 70 AD. They were put on the slave market and they couldn't get anybody to buy them. They buy the African, they buy these people, but they would not buy the Jews, according to Joseph Jovetus. It's a serious condition, it's a serious matter sin has.